Before the video begins, I would just like to state that almost all of the lines from this adaptation are for the old version of the adaptation that was set to release in 2021. So if there's any mistakes in lines or anything like that, there's nothing I can really do about it. So without further ado, enjoy this adaptation. The restoration of Great Waterton was complete. Tourists bustled about, eager to see the revival of the old town. Stanley was managing the line well. But Sir Topham Hatt asked Molly to assist with passenger trains. Neville was also assigned to deliver goods for the local merchants. The three engines got on swimmingly. When Molly and Neville first arrived, Stanley was jovial. He always smiled and whistled loudly as he passed. As time went on, Molly noticed a change. Stanley became timid and withdrawn. He didn't speak unless spoken to and seemed to be almost skittish. Molly decided it best to keep a watchful eye. One morning, Molly was waiting at the platform. As Stanley bustled in. Good morning! Stanley didn't reply. It was as if he had noticed Molly. He seemed to be looking for something. Stanley! Stanley jumped. Oh, goodness. I didn't see you there, Molly. Doing well, are you? I should be asking you the same thing. Is something the matter? Oh, no. Nothing at all. I was just seeing how busy the town is today. Must be off to the water tower. Goodbye! Stanley raced off. Leaving a perplexed Molly behind. I don't understand it. He's not the same Stanley who first arrived on the island. I think something's up. Oh, I don't know. Perhaps he's just adjusting to his new route line. I'm sure running a busy branch line comes with stress. Molly wasn't convinced, but said no more as the two engines went back to work. Neville was late, returning to Great Waterton that night. He had to collect building materials from the docks. But the boat from the mainland was delayed. By the time he arrived, darkness has fallen, and mist hung in the air. He was about to shun his trucks away when a sound piqued his attention. Stanley was shuffling up and down, in and out of the sightings.
What's he doing awake? He moved slowly towards the yard, trying to see through the mist. When suddenly... BOOM! Stanley appeared from the mist and collided with him! Neville? Oh dear, I'm sorry if I woke you. Neville hesitated. In the distance, he thought he could hear a slow puffing sound. He told Molly everything next morning. You say you heard another engine? It certainly sounded like another engine, but Stanley was the only one working this line when we arrived. That we know of. We know an engine who might have the answer. Later that afternoon, Molly was at the junction as Thomas bustled in. Hello Molly! How are things at Great Waterton? Not letting my hard work go to waste, are you? There is one thing I need to ask you. She explained about Stanley's strange behavior and Neville's encounter. I'm sorry, Molly. There are no engines left when I found Great Waterton. We did find an old rusted tender at the platform, but no sign of an engine. Where was the tender now? Who knows? At the scrapyard, I reckon. No use for it now, sadly. Maybe that's what Stanley's looking for. We must talk to him. Thank you, Thomas. Molly raced away with her passengers. She tried to find Stanley all day, but no avail. She made a plan, one which could only happen at night. When darkness fell, Molly crept towards Stanley's shed. The mist hung low again, and everything looked spooky. She wished Neville was coming with her, but he had been called away to collect a special load. She bravely crept closer and closer. There was Stanley in his shed, and a very old rusted engine sat beside him. Stanley was pale and quivering as the engine stared him down. Where is it? I don't know. Where is it? Molly rushed forward. Stanley looked even more afraid now. What is going on? And who is this? Before Stanley could say anything, the old engine began to crawl forwards. It rusted wheels groaning. Molly winced as the engine draw near. Everything stopped as a whistle cut through the air. It was Neville. He was pushing a flatbed with the old tender perched on top of it. Neville jumped when he saw the old engine. To Molly's surprise, the grimace on the engine's face curled into a smile, and its eyes began to twinkle. You found it. Thank you. Without another word, the engine crept slowly towards the flatbed and disappeared into the mist. Out of Neville's cab steps her top of hat, who was most surprised. Where did you find that tender? It was mistakenly taken to the scrapyards when the restoration began. A hat asked that it remains here. In honor of him. 
But who is he, sir? An engine who wants work, this land. A man who lived in the village taught me of its legend. When the land was forced to close, the engine was left behind in hopes that the villagers could find him a new home. I'm told that, when they returned to rescue him, he was gone. Only the changer remained. It is believed scrap merchants found him, took him to pieces, and... Sir Topham had paused to compose himself. That was that. Many of the surrounding villagers claimed that they heard whistles and steam after the land closed, but there was never an engine to be found. It seems that engine has been visiting you, Stanley. Everyone turned back to Stanley, who now looked miserable. I was afraid of him. I thought he was going to hurt me, when all he wanted was his tender. To be a complete engine again. But you tried to help him, Stanley. You show him kindness, and that speaks volumes about what engine you are. Hey, here, here. Sir Topham had commissioned a monument at the center of Great Waterton Square. The old tender sat on a plinth with a plague to commemorate the legend of the old engine. The other engines concealed from the platform. They all gave cheer whistles as they passed by. But no one whistles louder or longer than Stanley.